So now that the base configuration is in, there's one other thing I want to show you before we continue setting this up, and that is how to install and upgrade the software that's already on here. So I've cleared the screen again, and uh, we will now go into the installation of the software. Now in the previous video I made, I had some uh, feedback when I showed where to get the files uh, from the Cisco website, and basically the feedback was is people weren't interested in that. So instead of going through the Cisco website and showing you where to get these files, I'll just tell you which files that you're going to need. And from the Cisco website you can download these and that is uh, you want to get the software for your particular module whether it be AIM or network module. You, you want to download the proper software package and then you'll also need to install the language package for the languages you're going to install and then you'll need the license package depending on how many licenses you need and how many that your module supports. So once you have the software on your FTP server to install the software, we're going to use the software install command. And from here, you have a few options. You can do clean, upgrade, downgrade. In this case, we're going to do a clean install. And when you do a clean, you can choose a file that you've already downloaded or choose a URL. And in this case, we're going to use URL. And we will use an FTP server. Now, oops. Now in regard to the FTP server, one of the things that I did not see documented in the book is that by default, when you run this command, it's automatically going to send a username and password as anonymous. I was having problems installing it for a while and then I realized what it was doing. Um, so that's just one note if you're trying to set up a home lab. Um, I, I didn't see it documented anywhere, but that is what you have to do on your FTP server. Set up the set up an account with a username of anonymous and password of anonymous. So we'll put in the um, TFTP server address and then put in the package file name that we'll be using. Now it will say, "Do you want to continue?" And we will say yes. and this will begin the download process. Now I'm going to pause the video again just for a few because this takes a little while and then I'll resume once we're prompted for additional input. Okay and then midway through the installation here you'll be prompted to choose the language that uh, you'll be using and these are the files, the language packs you would have downloaded. So in this case we use the US English which is number three. So we'll press three and then enter and you can see the star that the English is now selected and then we just hit X and enter to indicate that we're done and then we'll start downloading the file of the language pack that from your TFTP server that we downloaded and then I will pause this again until it completes okay as this installation is completing we will have completed two of the three steps and that is installing the software and installing the language files um, however, we still need to install the license pack. So once this boots up, we will do the same thing. We will run the software install clean URL. And then in the FTP portion, we will specify the license file instead of the software. Okay, and then one thing I forgot to mention here is once everything is reloaded with the new software, you'll have to go through the initial configuration again. And I will again uh, fill this out, but pause the video and we'll continue from finishing the initial setup here. Okay, now that we have the new software installed, all we need to do is install the licenses for the mailboxes. So to do that, we will do the same thing. We will use the software install command and we'll use the clean URL and use FTP, the IP address, and then the file name. Then we press enter say yes and then this will install the license pack then we wait for this to install okay and now that the licenses are installed we will reset it and there's also a couple things we're gonna have to do on the CME side now and we will have a successful CUE installation okay so now we need to make a dial peer for CUE so what we'll do is go to the global config and type in dial peer voice and we'll give it say 5000 and have it a VoIP dial peer 
So then we'll say destination pattern and we'll give it say one five and anything else. And then we'll say session target IP version four and we'll give it the IP of 192.168.5.2 and by default it's skinny SCCP so we want to change the session protocol to SIP version 2. And then also for the DTMF we'll use uh, SIP notify messages so we will say DT, DTMF relay and SIP notify and then we want no VAD voice activity detection and we want to force the codec, make sure it uses G711. So say codec, and here's your list if you hit the question mark, but we'll be using the G711 ULAW. All right, we'll get out of there. And let's clear the screen again here. All right, now actually I almost forgot, another thing we can do is create ePhone DNs for the message waiting indicator. You can use SIP notify, but just to show you what the DN version of it is, is um, <clears throat> you go into global config and you'll say ePhone DN, and we'll say ePhone DN 10, and we'll give it a number of say 1550 and the four extensions after that. So basically, the internal extensions I have are set up for four digits, so this is going to specify the CUE to initiate the message waiting indicator on and then for the, whatever four digit it's supposed to turn on. So I'll uh, use the number 1550 with the four wild cards and then we'll say MWI on. And then we will make a, another one for say 1551. And this one, you probably guess, is MWI off. And the last thing we need to do is reload the AIM module since we installed those licenses and then we can get into the GUI configuration. So to reload we'll just use service module service engine 0 slash 0 and remember when we used the question mark it gave you some reload and reset so we'll just go ahead and hit reload and it will reload the service module. So we'll wait for that to come back up and we'll begin the installation of the GUI.